back in my Google Drive, what I want to do now is adjust my quiz settings. So I simply open it up and at the top you can see we have these three columns. We have questions, we have responses and settings. Now remember there's further settings over here in the three dots. That's where you can make a copy really handy if you're using the same passage with a group of learners but want to adjust the question slightly. That's also where you delete something that you don't want, where you um, can print it if you're needing to print it, add collaborators and so on. However, we're going to look at the settings just now. Now, because I opened this up as a quiz, it's automatically set as a quiz. However, if you accidentally started a form and then decided that you wanted it to be a quiz where it automatically provides feedback, sets answers, etc., you just simply toggle this little button here. You can see you've got some options here. Now, um, if you've decided to use marks with your learners, you can choose that they get marked and issued straight away. Or this idea of later after manual review allows time so you can have a look at their answers and then you can decide when you're returning it. That means you can have a discussion with the learners to ensure that they understand what the feedback is. So really helpful if you want them to really think about what you've said in feedback. One of the great things in the Chromebook is you can set it to locked mode, which means that they can't go out of the quiz. So really handy, particularly with younger learners or easily distracted learners. If we just scroll down, you have these other options around missed questions, correct answers and points value. Again, you can keep these hidden or open and you can also set a default value. Down here, we have a click on responses. So you can decide if you're collecting email addresses. I would suggest that since you're using it within Glow, you probably don't need to do that for a quiz, but that might be handy if it was a form where you were wanting to have that information. You can, um, obviously, if that's on, then you have the option to send them um, a, a copy of the response. Again, that might be useful if you're wanting to send the data out to the learners so that they can review where they went on. And you can choose whether or not they can edit after they've responded. At the moment, it's restricted to our users only. And at the moment, we've limited it to one response, but you might choose to give them the option to have a go more than once. So again, it's simply toggling that on or off. Then we have presentation. Um, so you can have things like a progress bar. If you're uh, using a quiz with learners and, and you don't want others to see um, the questions, so no cheating going on there, um, what you can do is you can shuffle the question order and you just have to toggle that on there. Um, you can see this is the um, link to another response. You're allowed that if you turn on the response limit up there. And you can also choose if you want to share the results summary with the respondents and the auto save is switched off. If we then look at the defaults, so we've set it by default, so you don't need to change this every time. And the question default, you can make them all required, which is really handy if you are at the start of creating a form and you don't want to have to remember to go back and make that required each time. So you just toggle that on and it will automatically do that for you. So that's all the different options that you have in settings. Definitely worth having a think about what you want for your quiz before you get started.